हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टनिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टनिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts updates and recent exams. Part 1. You will hear a job interview. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Please sit down Mr Wilson. My name's Jane Smith and I'm the personnel manager. Hello, how do you do? Now, this is just a short preliminary interview. I'd like to talk about your present job and what you've done up till now. Yes, of course. Well, could you tell me how long you've had your present position in Evening News? It is Evening News, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. I left university in 2002, is that right? Yes, at uh, 2002. Then I was unemployed for about 2 months, and then I traveled round Britain for a few weeks. So it must be more than 3 years now, in fact. Um, yes. And have you any particular reason for wanting to change your job? I mean, why do you want to move? Well, I actually like my present job and still find it interesting. The salary is okay, so it's nothing to do with money, though you can always do with more. I suppose the thing is that I'm really very ambitious and keen to get promoted, so that's the real reason. You say you like your job. Can you tell me what aspect you like most? Oh dear, that's difficult. There are so many things. My colleagues are quite nice to go along with. So there's a good cooperative atmosphere and compared to other presses the working conditions are great. I mean the office itself is good. Um yes. And then there's the fact that as a journalist I regularly write articles about what is happening at home or in the world. So I have to make decisions. I must be responsible for what I have written. You know, that's what I really like most about the job. They give me lots of room for initiative. Yes. Well, we're looking for someone who isn't a clock watcher and who isn't too concerned about working fairly long hours. Oh, I don't mind that. I'm used to it. I often work irregular hours. I was very often made to work at night. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Hi John, are you nearly ready? Oh no. I don't think I'm going to make it tonight. Why? I've got this assignment to finish for tomorrow. Well, maybe I can help. What do you have to do? I have to do a short presentation on some household object. And I just can't think of anything. I have to talk about what it is and the parts in it. Well, why not make it simple? Why not describe a bottle or a can? Well, that's far too simple. Okay, how about an aerosol can? Hmm. Maybe. What labels can you put on it? First you'd have to draw an aerosol can. First thing you could label would be the hairspray or whatever was in the can. You'd just label that product, I suppose. 
then you'd have to label the area above the product as the propellant. Is that the gas that presses down on the contents of the can, forcing it out through the dip tube? Yes, you've got it. OK. So far, so good. Now, at the top of the aerosol, there are quite a few things to label, so I'd have to write quite small. Unless you drew a couple of lines and showed an enlarged picture of that area. Yes, that would work. Then I could start labelling from the top to the bottom. The first thing on the enlargement would be the nozzle. The what? The nozzle. You know, N-O-Z-Z-L-E. Then the seal. Right. Then all I'd need is the spring. No, you'd need to label the inlet first. Then the final part would be the spring. Anyway, that's it. You've finished. We can go out now. Well, I have to type all that into the computer first and draw the can. Oh! That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. First, you have some time to look at questions. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Ronald Jaff with this week's edition of Movie Talk. First, let's look at the films this week in the theatre. The Kid Rides Again, When You Find Love, and Wronged. The last of the three, Wronged, is definitely the best. In fact, one of the best films in a long time, with Henry Michelson and Joanne Seymour. It is about a man who gets a life sentence for a murder he did not commit. In the style of the films of the 40s and 50s, it is a modern story of a man and his wife, wonderfully played by Joanne Seymour. They fight to make people believe Thompson is the wrong man and not the killer. The strength of their love is wonderful, even after Thompson has been in prison for 15 years. Of course, I won't tell you what happens after Thompson's 15th year in prison. That would ruin the story. But if you see no other film, you should see this one. The story may be old, but the acting is great, and it will hold your attention from beginning to end. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for When You Find Love. Just another silly story about how boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl again, and they live happily ever after. Hollywood ever get tired of such stupid films? Yet, on a New England college campus, the star of the movie, Tommy Seal, is a freshman. He meets the two years older Stephanie Fool, played by Sally Evans. In real life, she must be at least 30, not 20. Well... Billy, our hero, has had a hard time with Stephanie. After all, he is so much younger. But they fall in love in about a minute, as long as it takes to take a picture with a Polaroid. And they are both so happy, in true paradise, until, that is, until Buck, the star football player, played by Ronco Starr, the only good acting in the film, steals Stephanie away from the poor Billy. He is, after all, a senior and football star. And the rest of the film is about, naturally, how Billy gets Stephanie back, making her remember their love. He shows her that he, not Buck, is the man for her. Well, if you can stand a stupid story and bad acting, then take your eight-year-old child to see When You Find Love. Anyone older will leave the theatre before the movie ends. And finally, The Kid Rides Again, a western about a young cowboy, Kit Barnes, who stops the bad guys, the robbers, the killers, and plain old bullies, and helps the good guys. Kit is fast with a gun and never once in this cowboy. Kit is the cowboy who never stays in one place for a very long time, who leads a lonely but very free life. Nothing new on the storyline, but a good classic style western with good acting. Peter Sells as Kit catches just the right mood. He's an excellent and natural cowboy. There are beautiful scenes of the open country in the west and enough action to hold your interest. A good cowboy film for those who, like me, always enjoy seeing the old west.
And now, before we go on with the news from Hollywood, a word from our sponsor. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear a discussion between a tutor, Dr. Lester, and two students, Greg and Alexandra, at the end of a talk about music. In the first part of the discussion, they are talking about some of the students' favorite instruments and favorite styles of music. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. I think it's time we looked at the results of our survey. Uh, what did you find out, Alexandra? We're a group with very diverse tastes, Dr Lester. Hmm, I'm not surprised. What were the favourite instruments? Well, Greg loves drums. He told me he played drums when he was at primary school, and now he plays drums with his friends at weekends. They have a band. Hmm, good. Uh, what do you like to play, Alexandra? My favourite is a guitar. However, I haven't played for years, so I keep hoping to start again. Will I go on with the others? Hmm, yes, please. Katya is like Greg. She loves to listen to drums. She says she's not a player, just a listener. Rachel, as you know, is a violinist, so of course it's natural that she should favour the violin. Hmm. So we have two people who love the sound of the drum and two who like strings. Uh, the violin for Rachel and the guitar for Alex. What does Harry like? Harry says the best instrument of them all is the piano. He claims it's more versatile than any other instrument. Emiko plays a piano, but her favourite instrument is the flute. The flute? Yes, Emiko plays the flute too, of course. Hmm, thank you. Alexandra. Uh, Greg, will you tell us the students' favourite style of music? We're really very conservative. My favourite is classical music, and that's Alexandra's choice too. Katja claims to like rock. So that's a vote from Greg, Alexandra and Katja. Does Rachel prefer classical music? Rachel made a choice which surprised me. She plays the violin. So I expected classical or opera, but Rachel says that she prefers country music. Hmm, how interesting. What's Harry's choice? Harry likes to listen to opera and loves to go see a performance. He says opera has everything, colour and spectacle and theatre and great music. And Amico? Amico says jazz is her favourite music. She goes to listen to jazz every Friday evening. She also likes opera, heavy metal, classical, but jazz is the best. Thank you, Greg. I wanted to see what you all liked so I could understand your musical tastes more, and I want to move from this to a discussion of the psychological effects of music. In the second part of the discussion, Dr. Lester will talk about the way music affects our bodies. Look at questions 25 to 30 first.
For the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to divide music roughly into two types. Music which stimulates us, and music which calms us. It seems that music which stimulates us gives rise to actual changes in our bodies. We listen to exciting music, and our hearts beat faster, our blood pressure rises, and our blood flows more quickly. In short, we're stimulated. Soothing music, however, has the opposite effect. We relax and let the world go by. Our heart beats more gently, our blood pressure drops, and we feel calm. Um, Alexandra, can you think of things which help us to relax? Um, gentle rhythms? Yes, in part. The melodies which help us to relax are smooth flowing and often have repeated rhythms. These rhythms are constant and dynamic, a little like the crash of the sea on the beach. Their very predictability is sedating, relaxing. By contrast, very loud, discordant music with unpredictable rhythms and structures excites and stimulates us. These two generalizations about the differences between music which stimulates and music which soothes are true as far as they go, but they are far from conclusive. We still have a lot of research to do to find out what, uh, for instance, people of different cultures hear and feel when they listen to music. This department is taking part in a continuing study on the influence of culture on musical perception, and we'll talk about that more next week. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear an extract from a talk about preventative medicine, specifically how students can look after their own health. First you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Good morning. I'm Dr. Pat Parker, and I'm here to talk to you about preventative medicine in its widest and most personal aspects. In other words, I'm here to tell you how the patient should wrest control of their health away from the practitioners of medicine and take charge of their own medical destiny. I want to talk about staying out of the hands of the doctor. When the patient takes responsibility for her or his own health, and let's decide the patient is male for now, men are in fact more at risk than women anyway, when the patient takes over his own health regime, he must decide what he wants to do. The first thing, of course, is to give up the demon nicotine. Smoking is the worst threat to health, and it's self-inflicted damage. I have colleagues who are reluctant to treat smokers. If you want to stay well, stay off tobacco and smoking in all its manifestations. Our department has recently completed a survey of men's health. We looked at men in different age groups and occupations, and we came up with a disturbing insight. Young men, particularly working class men, are at considerable risk of premature death because of their lifestyle. As a group, they have high risk factors. They drink too much alcohol. They smoke more heavily than any other group. Their diet is frequently heavy in saturated fats, and they don't get enough exercise. We then did a smaller survey in which we looked at environmental factors which affect health. I had privately expected to find air or water pollution to be the biggest hazards, 
and they must not be ignored. However, the effects of the sun emerged as a threat which people simply do not take sufficiently seriously. Please remember that too much sunlight can cause permanent damage. Given this information and the self-destructive things which people, particularly young men, are doing to themselves, one could be excused for feeling very depressed. However, I believe that a well-funded education campaign will help us improve public health standards and will be particularly valuable for young men. I'm an optimist. I see things improving, but only if we work very hard. In the second part of the talk, I want to consider different things that you as students can do to improve your fitness. So now I'd like to issue a qualification to everything I say. People will still get sick and they will still need doctors. This advice is just to reduce the incidence of sickness. It would be great if disease were preventable, but it's not. However, we have power. In the late 80s, the Surgeon General of the United States said that 53% of our illnesses could be avoided by healthy lifestyle choices. I now want to discuss these choices with you. You should try to make keeping fit fun. It's very hard to go out and do exercises by yourself, so it's wise to find a sport that you like and play it with other people. If you swim, you can consider scuba diving or snorkeling. If you jog, try to find a friend to go with. If you walk, choose pretty places to walk or have a reason for walking. Your exercise regime should be a pleasure, not a penance. The university is an excellent place to find other people who share sporting interests with you, and there are many sports teams you can join. This unfortunately raises the issue of sports injuries, and different sports have characteristic injuries. As well as accidental injuries, we find repetitive strain injuries occurring in sports where the same motion is frequently performed like rowing and squash. The parallel in working life is repetitive strain injury which may be suffered by typists or other people who perform the same action hour after hour, day after day. In this context, therefore, the most important thing to remember before any sport is to warm up adequately. Do stretching exercises and aim at all times to increase your flexibility. Be gentle with yourself and allow time to prepare for the game you have chosen to play. Don't be fooled by the term warm-up, by the way. It's every bit as important to do your warm-up exercises on a hot day as on a cool one. I think one of the most sensible and exciting developments in the reduction of injury is the recognition that all sports can borrow from each other. Many sports programs are now encouraging players to use cross-training techniques, that is, to borrow training techniques from other sports. Boxers have been using their cross-training for years, building up stamina by doing road work and weight training while honing their skills and reflexes. Other sports which require a high level of eye-hand coordination are following this trend. So you see table tennis players running and jogging to improve their performance and footballers doing flexibility exercises which can help them control the ball better. All of these results are good, but the general sense of well-being is best and is accessible to us all, from trained athletes to people who will never run 100 metres in less than 15 seconds. Good health is not only for those who will achieve athletic greatness. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
so guys don't forget like subscribe and share on my youtube channel and my facebook page i'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent ielts exam writing us topics listening reading practice test and speaking you cut guesswork please guys participate in everyday new ielts listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual ielts exam for more ielts material visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com the link is given below in the description if you need pdf files of latest ielts material then please join my telegram channel so guys please write your score below the comment section again thanks for listening god bless you all guys stay tuned stay safe